the trick is to take your time. Do things absolutely right. Make sure everything is as good as you can do the first time around. It'll save you time in the long run. Okay, now, it's another little trick I found. On the spindle, you want to concentrate the heat in the center of the spindle. I found that invariably the edge of the spindle will catch on my, on my hearth board. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my knife and just going to carve off the smallest bit of the shoulder of my spindle. So just as uh, I was forming that, that ember there, my camera decided it'd be a good time for the battery to run out. So um, here I am, back again, and hopefully you can, you can see this one burst into flame. So we've got the same kit here, we'll try it again, and uh, hopefully we can catch it on camera this time.
Got it. Okay, I don't know if you can see that. It's a small ember, but it's smoking really, really well. And I'm just fanning it with my hand, just to encourage it. There it is, it's starting to get red in the center. There's no need to rush this step because that will smolder for a long, long time. Let me see if we can get a close up of that. There it is. And now I'll get my bird's nest. business over it and drop that right into the center of my tinder bundle right there. Now There it is. Okay, now, we're not making a fire out of this, so, uh, or at least not a campfire, I should say, or a cooking fire, so I'm gonna make sure this is completely out. So I've just got some water, and uh, we're going to uh, put some water in my hand, and just pepper it over there. Make sure that's completely out. further. Now, take a little stick, stir that around. It's exactly the same process you should do with any kind of a campfire, really. Stir up all those coals. Make sure it's completely out. Make sure you can, make sure you can go like this in the embers of your fire. Because if there's, if there's any heat, if there's any spark, you're going to feel it. It's not going to burn you, but you'll feel it. It's actually still a little bit warm there, amazingly. Just put a little bit more water. There it is. As you can see, there's a lot of grass in this area. I don't want to um, I don't leave anything smoldering. There it is. I'll wash my hands off. All right, well, there you have it. How to make fire from a bow drill set, uh, start to finish. Now, there's a couple things which... Uh, I didn't comment on as I was making this that I just wanted to include. When you're making fire with your spindle, um, certainly twice, but, but honestly probably even once, what you're going to notice is that the end of your spindle becomes uh, really uh, extremely smooth and extremely polished. And what you want to do is, uh, is actually just take your knife and just um, scrape that off. Just some very fine cuts. You don't want to take very big cuts because then what you're going to do is you're going to change the shape of your spindle and then it's not going to seat very well in your hearth board and you basically have to re-burn it in again. So just um, take a little bit of that off 
uh, but it's an, but enough where you're taking the polish off and, and you'll know it won't look um, so shiny anymore. And also one thing that I will do is that I will actually um, just flatten off the point because I don't know if you can see what's happened here. Let's see if that, that will focus on that, maybe. Let's see if we can focus on, in on that. If you, if you notice, what's happened is it's actually burned the edges of the, uh, well, not the edges, just off-center the spindle. It hasn't actually uh, burnt the, the center of the spindle. And the reason for that, of course, is because that is the spot where I've got my notch. So that bit's not burning as much because it doesn't have as much friction, doesn't have as much contact with the wood, and so it's not burning as much. So what you want to do is, uh, is to just uh, level that off. Um, otherwise, you'll get, you'll get some strange behaviors in your spindle. The other thing that I will mention is that I have um, seen, I won't say I've come up with it because I, di I didn't come up with it, uh, I saw someone else do this, uh, a new way of attaching the end of the cord. So remember, the, at this end we've got the fork stick and the loop, it's really easy. At this end, there's, there's obviously a number of ways you can do this, but what I found was that uh, if you split the end of your, of your bow, and if you can see what I've done here, I've put the cordage through the split, wrapped it around, and I've wrapped it around underneath first to prevent it from splitting anymore, wrapped it around a couple times, and then I've just come back in and gone back through the split yeah, as though it's kind of like a, a cleat on a boat or something like that, and that's, that's in there solid, that's not moving. I actually don't even have a half hitch um, or any kind of knot here, it's, it's crossed there, but there's no knot. And that's, hold, that's holding that really very, very securely uh, because of the number of what, times it's, it's doubling back on itself on that split. But a really secure way of securing your cordage to the end of the, uh, of the bow. And it's very, very easy to adjust uh, because there's no knots in it. You know, there it is. All I can do is slide it this way to tighten it. See, it's really, it's really in there tight. It's not moving. Or I can, I can, I can loosen it. And if I just give it a couple of wraps below the split, I towards the center of the bow. Make sure that it's not, it's not going to split any further on me. And then I'll just go back and pull it through, pull it through the gap again. If I want, I can put a half hitch in there, uh, but you know that's that's going to hold it really well. I find that's just a really very fast way of doing it, and a very easy way to adjust the uh, the tension on your bow. That's it. Um, oh, there's one other thing. Uh, I was just reading. Uh, so you'll see, I've got I've got my birch bark welcome mat. For the really astute amongst you, you'll see that this is actually a different piece of birch bark. This is a piece I, can't, I brought from home, so I absolutely know it's dry. The, uh, the one that I was using uh, in my previous attempt uh, was, uh, was off the landscape. It was a little bit damp, and um, it, was, it, was, it was meaning I was having to produce the ember multiple times to actually get it to light. Uh, something really interesting that I read in um, Morris Kahansky's book that he said that a dry hearthboard, if it's left on you know, quote, dry ground, but there's always moisture in the ground. If it's left on dry ground for half an hour, that can actually um, impair your chances of making a bow drill fire successfully so much that you won't be able to do it successfully uh, in, in a lot of cases. So even just laying this for a half an hour on the ground, on, the, on, on dry ground, uh, will impair your chances. So the, the dryness of your hearth, uh, of your welcome mat, the bit that's going to catch the ember, because that's you know that's exactly where the ember is falling. If that's not 100% dry, then your ember is going to have to try and dry out the welcome mat as it's forming, and that's that's just not going to that's not going to work, work very well for you. So, just a couple more tips and tricks uh, there. Hopefully, um, hopefully this has been of a help. Hopefully, if you're making a bow drill fire set for the first time. And, uh, or maybe you've tried it before and you haven't been successful, maybe that some of these little, these little tips will be of use. I uh, hope so. And uh, yeah, it's, it's great fun. I mean, it's, it's such an exciting thing to, to actually blow uh, a spark into flame from a, from a bow drill set. So I encourage you to try it. It's, it's great. It's, it's a real feeling of accomplishment. So, as always, be prepared. Enjoy the outdoors. Take care, guys. See you later. Bye-bye.